Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. I am your host, Dr. Angela Butchester. You guys know what I like to do on my show. I want to enlighten you. I want to inspire you. I want to empower you to become your best self. Now, Scripture reminds us that the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And that's what we want to do today, get you fired up about my guest, Dean Matthews. And we'll be talking about his book, The Dark Hall. So go on and get comfy, get cozy, get your coffee or get your tea because we are about to get started. Hello, Dean. Thank you so much for joining me here on Daily Spark with Dr. Angelo. Hello, Dr. Angelo. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. Now, as is tradition here, we always give our guests an opportunity to introduce themselves to those people out there that are unfamiliar with you and your work. So first question, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What makes you, you? Um, I'm, I'm Dean Matthews. I'm 61 years old, and I've, um, and I've done a lot of things in my life. I am... Um, Yes, yeah, so I've been around a bit, so um, and I thought I'd um, start writing books after many years of doing it um, in the shadows, so to speak. Now, being an author, is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did you find that the opportunity was presented to you and you said yes? Um, I've always been interested in writing, always been interested in fantasy novels, um, but only recently, yes, um, writing fantasy as as sort of an opportunity that I've um, recently grasped because um, my work has caused me to uh, sit down and do more writing, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the title of your book, how did you come about the title? Uh, the title, um, that's just totally random, to be honest with you. I just thought it sounded good, to be honest with you. Hmm. So there's no inspiration behind that at all? You just, you literally pulled the title out of the air? Absolutely, yeah. It was just um, something that I um, came to me one day, and um, and from that I've started writing books, really. Uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, that, that's, it's as simple as that. I'm sorry, but it's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. No, we're just getting clarification because for some author out there, they're thinking, oh, my goodness, I thought that the title of the book had to connect to the story or I thought that it had to mean something. And if those rules are um, are not what applies, then, hey, you have just given someone a aha moment out there. So that's awesome. Now, as far as the ideal reader is concerned, um, I like to ask it this way. Is your book appropriate for someone uh, high school age, or would you say they need to be a little older, perhaps college age and older? Oh, no, my book is suitable for all ages, and it relates to all ages and relates, relates to everybody I think, in the world today, uh, because the world, as far as I'm concerned, needs a, um, a bit of a, a reality check. Mm-hmm. So the proper way to read your book, many times an author will suggest that we read it from cover to cover, simply meaning page after page. Others will um, help us along the journey, if you will, and put it in sections or chapters where we need to read a particular section or a particular chapter before moving on to the next. Others lay it out more like a devotional where we should read perhaps three or four pages, put it down until the next day, and then um, repeat that throughout uh, the totality of, of the book. Did you outline the book for the reader in any particular way? Um, that's a very good question. That's got me flummoxed, I'm afraid, to a degree. Um, it's, it's just a story. Um, all I can tell you is it's just a story about uh, me and my life. And like I said, I, I haven't fought dragons and I haven't dropped, um, fought fairies and stuff like that, but... It, it's just, um, it's about me and my family and, and my journey um, towards adulthood, I suppose, and the things I've learned over my life. And um, 
Yeah, and uh, a journey towards um, towards enlightenment, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Which is which is my next question for you, and that is, uh, tell us a little bit about about the book. What what message were you trying to uh, get across to to make sure that the 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 reader picked up on, even though. It's fantasy and it's fiction. Uh, many times there's still a message there, freedom or, you know, uh, don't take yourself so seriously. What what did you want to make sure that the reader picked up? What lessons along the way did you leave behind? Um, question everything. Don't be led um, because I, I hate the bully. I hate people that try to make you do things that you don't want to do. I think everybody has a choice. Um, yeah, and um, and like I say, don't don't take everything at face value, um, and take life more easy. I mean, you know, to my mind nowadays, you're not allowed to have opinions, which is which seems to me a, a, a silly idea. Um, and you should be allowed to do what you want to do to a degree. I'm not saying that there aren't um, rules and regulations. Of course, there are. But um, to me, there are too many what I call trivial rules and regulations, if that's if I can say that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just to everybody lighten up, I think. I think life is far too serious these days. We all need to just take a step back and um, perhaps think of the past and think of the things that have gone in the, in the past and apply them to the future. Now, when it comes to your inspiration, uh, so many times an author will say um, they never thought about being an author necessarily, but they journaled or they were known to write things down a time or two. And someone came across those readings and said, oh my goodness, you should be an author. You should share this with the rest of the world. Or your story is so... Um, inspiring or so fantastical that no one would believe that this actually happened when it really did. Um, did you happen to have uh, anyone who inspired you or nudged you to write this particular book? Not is someone your mentor, that's a different question, but did someone give you that nudge to write this book? Well, when I was eight years old, um, I, my teacher read to me The Hobbit over a series of uh, evenings. And um, ever since um, he did that, it was um, it inspired me, um, fantasy-wise. Um, and over the years, um, I have definitely uh, written fantasy. I, I just love fantasy, science fiction, anything that takes you from the uh, away from the real world. Perhaps that's not the way to go. I don't know, but um, yeah, that that's what inspired me originally. Um, and then about 10, 20 years ago, I decided that I thought I was going to write, I just wanted to write a family history, actually. And then I thought, well, why not incorporate my family history and make it into a fantasy novel, which is what I've done. I mean, a lot of the stuff in there is, is, is actually stuff that I've done, whether people believe it or not, is entirely up to them. But a lot of it is uh, and things that I have done in my life. Mm -hmm. Now, when when one is choosing to incorporate bits and pieces of real life, be it that it's a neighbor's story, their own personal story, or um, something they've seen on television, whatever inspired them, they are they are taking bits and pieces of of the real world and placing it into their book. How do you determine which pieces of yourself you will share in the story? Um, do you do you have a point where you say, well, I will share, you know, uh, this and that, but I will not share the other piece of the story? How do you make that determination? Um, I, I, I'm just an open person anyway, and I have nothing to be ashamed of or nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, people can make judgments, of course, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm. I, I have nothing to hide, so um, I, I, I don't know how I can really explain this one to you. Um, a lot of people are very private. I'm. 
I am private to a degree, but um, I haven't. Yeah, I have nothing to hide. So, yeah, that, that's it, really. Right. So let me so let me delve down a, a, a little bit deeper. And this isn't about you know hiding or or shining light on a particular part of 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 one's life. So it's not quite that serious of a question. I mean, is there a process that you have where you say, I want to share this particular story that has happened in my life. And I'm going to share, um, if the story consisted of 10 pages worth of information, do you have a process that says, I'm going to share pages one through three in this chapter, but then I'm going to share pages four through seven in the next chapter. How do you determine where you place the bits and pieces of the story, of the true story, in your book? Oh crumbs! Um, that's a very good question again. Um, it, um, when I'm writing, think things just um, they just feel right when I write them. Um, when I get to a certain point in the story, in the fantasy story, um, I think, okay, that would be relevant to that point, to that to that part of the story. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, that's it really. Um, and, and like I say, I'm, I'm 61 years old now, and I think I've accrued quite a bit of um, knowledge as it when it comes to life. So, um, yeah, uh, that's it, I'm uh-huh. afraid. As simple uh-huh. as that. No, I, I, I like that answer. And if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that when you get to a certain point, you know, okay, I've I've shared enough there. And and you pick it back up where it feels comfortable. That it's kind of an intuitive thing when you're writing to just go with the flow of of the thought, and that you will know where to pause and where to start again as it as it goes with the storyline when you're writing the book. I I love that. I love that that you're not forcing the whole story at one time, but you're allowing it to ebb and flow. I, I love it. I love it. Now, for so many of the authors that I talk to, especially with science fiction, with our sci-fi um, and, and fantasy authors, um, it's not just one book, but they actually have a goal of writing a series of, of books on a particular topic. Is this a one-off, or is this book a part of a series of books? Oh, this is definitely a series of books, um, and I'm not quite sure where it's going to end, actually. Um I sort of got the main the, the main body and the main parts of the story as it goes through. So I'm looking at I think I'm looking at least ten ten episodes, ten books. Um, and yeah, um, who knows? I'm not quite sure where it's going to end or how the story is going to flow. As as the question you just asked again, it's all a matter of feel, and all a, all a matter of how the story will go as to how it will be written and how things will be um, placed there, yeah. So at least 10 books Mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be um, a very common answer is that, you know, you you may have a particular goal, uh, but you're really going to allow the work to dictate uh, the end result, be it three books or 10 books or, you know, 20 books, whatever it is, um, that you will know when the appropriate time is uh, to end the series. So I love that. You have just given uh, someone a very, um, a, a piece of, of wisdom there that they have been searching for. Well, Dean, it is time for us to go to break. But before we do, can you remind everyone, please, what is the title of this book? Where can we get a copy? And how do we stay in contact with you? Uh, yeah, my my book's called The Dark Tile, um, and it's available on Amazon, and I have a website, dgematthews.com. If you would like to know about me, uh, I don't know who would, but you never know. Um, yeah, and it's uh, available at all good bookstores, so hey. All righty, everyone. Now you know where you can get a copy of the book. We'll be back right after this. We are back. Thank you so much for joining me for Daily Sparkler, Dr. Angela. And my guest today is Dean Matthews, and we're talking about his book, The Dark Tall. Now, Dean, my next question for you is, 
um, you have um, written some other books as well. As a seasoned author, uh, what are what are some of the lessons that you've learned about being an author in general? Oh crumbs! Um, <laughs> again, you've uh, you've caught me out with another question. Now I don't know really. Um, what have I learned as an author? Is um, uh, oh crumbs. Um, uh, write, write how you feel. I suppose is it's, it's write, write what you're passionate about. Uh, write, uh, write the stuff that you like. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, you've caught me out with that one. <laughs> sorry. Hmm. No, I, I totally, I totally, completely understand that. Write what you like. And I think that is so important. I remember asking this question of of an author uh, a few years back and she gave a very similar answer as well. But writing writing what you like, writing what you know so that it it flows a, a lot better. If you like the story, then you're going to share an amazing story with us. And then as the reader, we can go along on that journey with you. So yeah, I I like I like that answer. Now, for for someone who is an author, uh, most people assume that you read a lot of books as well. Um, Who are some of your favorite authors or who are some writers who have inspired you to to keep writing? Well, I must admit, I don't read a lot of books now because um, I'm too busy reading my own stuff and writing my own stuff, but... um, Stephen Donaldson's the uh, the White Girl Welder was a great inspiration for me, as was um, the Shannara series, as was David Eddings and the um, the Belgrad. That's the one that um, really has inspired me, and I love reading. I must admit, and um, I, I'm just a big fan of high adventure and um, uh, uh, and things like that. You know, it's um, that's what's inspired me here. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I like I like ans- uh, asking that question um, because I find that when we when we take a moment to review our lives and you know hindsight is always twenty twenty we find that there is that moment in our lives where someone did something introduced us to a book in some way shape or form and it really helped that piece of us blossom and bloom like the teacher reading to you and you taking that upon yourself to to read and discover uh on your own i've i've told my mother who knew that my mother's love of books would inspire me to not only read but in having a radio show to interview authors about the books that they have written, how that kind of comes around full circle. So I, I love that. I love that. Now, when it comes to support, I think that in all of the things that we do, we have a group of people, uh, be it two people or, or 20 people, but we have those folks that help encourage us, that help keep us inspired to, to keep moving forward. Who would you say have been the important members of your support team that have helped keep you inspired to keep moving forward? Well, that's a very short question. I'm afraid it's a very short answer. Um, my My partner... And my mother, they've been absolutely um, phenomenal in supporting me and encouraging me to uh, to, to move forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and I I like I like that they have always been there. You know that they will give you that encouragement. I find that people that have a support team, um, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's two people or twenty people. Having those folks there makes, I find, makes all uh, the world of difference, that you feel that you're not alone in your endeavor. So thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Now, when it comes to confidence, I think that authors are um, an interesting lot. 
because you guys are willing to uh, dig deep into your imagination to share stories with us, be that they are fantasy or nonfiction, but you've written and presented them in a way that we can go along on the journey with you. What has been one of the biggest uh, confidence boosters for for you? How do you keep that piece of motivation going? Um, I mean, regardless of if it, it, it's not it's not money. I know a lot of people want to make lots of money. I'm just happy with making a living at this. Um, so um, my motivation my, my motivation is that I like to write, and mainly that people like what I write. Um, I've had a, um, a series of reviews recently on my book, and um, the fact that that some of the comments I got were were absolutely and they brought a tear to my eye, to be honest with you, and, and, and that's what it's all about for me, is that people like what I write. That's the biggest inspiration for me. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I, I think that that is its own encouragement. Um, many of the authors that I've had the opportunity to spend time with agree with you there, Dean, that it's not about the money. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be financially compensated for, for your work, but that's not the driving force uh, behind why uh, people continue to write. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. Now, when it comes to what you do for uh, a phrase that I think has, has started to trend, and that is self-care, and keeping yourself in a positive uh, mindset and keeping yourself healthy and wealthy, uh, what do you do uh, other than writing that really keeps you in, in a mindset to uh, enjoy your life and, and to want to move forward? Um, well, not so much anymore, but um, I'm, I'm, I've always been uh, very fit and very healthy, um, and I always, um, anything with the bat and ball I could play, and, and, and athletics, and uh, I even play, I've even practiced Kempo Karate, and skiing. Um, unfortunately, one of the reasons why I've had to give up uh, work, physical work, is because um, I suffer from arthritis now, which is which is not a good thing. Uh, very frustrating. Uh, but it's, so it's all about now, really, um, positive mental attitude, um, and that's and that's what I have to do. And that's where my my mother and my my partner come in uh, to me is that they keep me they keep me positive and keep me going because they believe in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I don't think that people really understand how important that piece of it is, no matter what you're going through, having that plus one or plus two uh, to, to be able to share, to share your joys. You know, when we, um, many times people will say, uh, you know, the vacation was, was better because you had your, your best friend there or lunch was better because you were able to do it with your, with your parent or with your sibling. You know, just having those shared experiences uh, definitely can add a, a positive um, boost to to our wellness. I, I could not agree with you more there. Now, I would like to kind of shift gears just a little bit. One of the things that I do is ask experienced authors about their, their process for the aspiring authors that we have out there. They're one of the biggest groups that email us and love that I ask you guys these questions. So with, with that being said, I want to ask you about publishing. Every author has to decide if they are going to self-publish or if they're going to utilize professional services in getting it done or go to a publishing house. How did you make the determination for, for this book, how you would publish it? Um, I, I don't know how, how um, disparaging you want me to be, but um, there are companies out there that do prey on up-and-coming authors, and they take their money with no return whatsoever. Um, I've been down that road. Um, I am now beginning to see the lights. Um, if you want to go down that self-publishing route, I do suggest that people 
search out companies themselves. Do not pander to companies that phone you up promising you all sorts of wonderful, uh, wonderful things because it doesn't work. So if you're going to go down that road, and it is the best road because agents are fine to a degree, um, but yeah, the self-publishing route is the way to go. Um, but do not, all these companies that claim to be your friends and claim to want to help you and claim this, that, and the other, I'm afraid all they're after is your money. So please, 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 phone mm -hmm. this, um, research this yourself. Mm -hmm. I can definitely understand that, and so much has changed over over the years. So you are you are so right. There are there are folks out there that are looking to take advantage, and then there are companies that will truly help. So do take the time to do that due diligence to find out about them. You are you are so right there. And you know, I, I have found that um along along that same vein that unfortunately one person can have, you know, a bad experience, uh, but a hundred people can have a really great experience. So you're right. Do your due diligence and and really look at uh, what the company has to offer and make sure that they're not selling you just just smoke uh, that they're selling you know that they're going to provide the steak not just the sizzle you are cool. so right there I, I love that piece of advice Dean thank you so much for coming on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela and sharing not only about your book in the process but your bits of knowledge and um, wisdom uh, that you have gathered along the way we appreciate your doing that now we are out of time but before I let you go Dean could you please remind everyone what is the title of your book where can we get a copy and how do we stay in contact with you my book is called The Dark Tile, and you can get it on Amazon, or you can go to my website, dgmatthews.com. Um, from there, you can also go to Amazon as well. So, Thank you again for being a guest on Daily Spark with Dr. Angela. And listeners, thank you for spending time with us here as well. You could have been anywhere, but you chose to spend it with us here today, and I thank you for doing so. With that being said, I pray that you will always receive God's grace and mercy throughout your day. Until next time, everyone, remember that you, you are blessed in the Lord. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.